So, so you have to say hi to the camera. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. All right. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Um, so the myth about you said that uh, you've been discovered while you were playing in the Metro in Paris. Is that true? Yeah, it is partly true. I mean, I was uh, I was uh, in Paris. I was on the Metro and I was playing. But I actually came out to play outdoors because the sun was shining and there was, uh, I was in Paris but I hadn't really seen Paris. So I came outdoors and I was playing in front of a cafe. And in front of that cafe somebody was there and he was a guy who had a studio. And he said, wow man, do you have a demo tip? I said, what's the demo tip? You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what a demo tip is. He said, well, come to my studio and, and record with me three songs. And as a result of meeting that guy, I got signed eventually to this label. Because the guy who started there was a friend of his. Yeah. And the guy heard the tape. And uh, so the legend is the legend is true and it's a beautiful story, but really what it was was like oh, I just left school and I, I, I never traveled anywhere. I was in Nigeria, yeah. school, Nigeria, England. So I took a, a trip, you know. Paris was a, was a place to come because it was very near. Yeah. I had no money. I had yeah. like 40, 40, 50 pounds. The ticket was 40 pounds, one way ticket. And I arrived in Paris with 10 pounds, which is 100 yeah, yeah. francs. I had a place to stay for like a week because I met some Brazilian people yeah. on the train and they okay. got me to stay in their place in Rue Saint Denis. And I said to myself, I'm just going to play and bask and make some money and survive however long I can. Uh -huh. And as a result of doing that, you know, by enjoying myself, I met a guy who helped me get signed. Mm. So yeah, it is true. Was it your dream to get signed? Or like, did you come to Paris in. Like the hope that you would something like that would happen to you. <laughs> you know what? I came to Paris because um I've been I've been playing in London on the street because I left school. And um, you know London was like you know a lot of police. You know people weren't very nice to you. It was kind of like a musician on the street. It's just like you know people don't really you yeah. know, give you any respect. And I heard about people who went to Prague and Barcelona. But, you know there's a whole music scene on the street. Mm -hmm. Clowns, street performers, jugglers, they all know each other and they all travel around Europe every summer. There's a whole route and scene that yeah. happens. And I became part of the scene because I met people from all the different countries. And so um, what I went to Paris to do was to enjoy playing on the street, was to enjoy, was to make some money and to have not, not have any hassle by the police. Because yeah. I heard that people really admire and appreciate yeah. performers, you know, yeah. street performers. And I wanted to just do that. True. So that's what I came to Paris for. Cool. And, I, and, I, and Paris had this romantic idea in my mind too, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. I was like a young man, oh. 20, 20 years old, you know, I read about Miles Davis coming to yeah. Paris and, you know. Uh, All these glamour yeah, stars. Yeah, so I said, well, you know, it's cool, let me go there. These people look like they sound pretty cool. <laughs> and it worked for you. Uh, your parents uh, wanted you to be a doctor, but you became a musician. So instead of healing people's body, you heal people's mind yeah. uh, that's true so are, are they proud of you for that yeah I mean nowadays uh, my family is very cool with my music because they've seen after so many years they finally saw what I did yeah because they never really saw what I did all the time I yeah. mean years and years and years they never saw what I did I don't know why I mean I don't know so finally I did a concert in Lagos maybe about two years ago yeah and everybody came Cousins, nephews, aunties, you know, everybody was there. And it was like packed, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. There was like 3,000 people. There was like, the audience was a real interesting mixture of like kids, yeah. moms, you know, uh, diplomats, all the, all the, everybody came because, you know, Kazai, man, Kazai came to Lagos to, with his band, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And just, we just killed it. It was an amazing show. And my mother, I mean, after the show, I was backstage. They all came backstage. My mom, my mom was just like, Mm -hmm. Family. <laughs> hey. She's like, so this is what you've been doing all those years <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> you know, because at yeah. home I'm very quiet. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't say anything at home. I'm very like. So cool. You know? And then she saw me on stage like. Ah. <laughs> it was great. So really, now it's like because I joined, they have my T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. They have everything. That that is our first fan. Yeah, so it's very cool. It took a long time though. Yeah, but you know. Uh, if you could bring back to life a dead musician for a little jam session, who would it be? To bring back to life a musician for yeah. a jam session? Well, just only one person? Yeah, just one. Wow. <laughs> Sorry.
Oh, just one person. That's not fair. <laughs> For a jam session? Yeah. Oh, God. That's, that's difficult, man. I mean, of course, I'd like to bring Jimmy, but Jimi yeah. Hendrix, but James Brown, man. Yeah. Come on, can you imagine? <laughs> James Brown. Jamming with James Brown. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for the vibe, man. That'd yeah. be amazing. So I guess it's gonna. It's a real tight yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and James. You'll flip the coin, probably. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we'll flip the coin. Man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and my last question. Uh, it's two last question in one question. Uh -huh. um, so if you had a magic wand, what would you change first in your life, and second in today's world? In today's world. Yeah. Well, first of all, what would I change in my life if I had a magic wand? Yeah. I would, um, of course, I would make my, my hands and my music and everything a lot more effective, a lot more super fucking effective than they are now with the magic wand. I'd make them all right. like... Seven finger by each, each, yeah, each like, hand or... I'd make them like <laughs> super, super like effective. Even more, more effective. It's never enough. Yeah. It's never enough. And, uh, and then in the world, if I had a magic wand, mm -hmm. well, it would have to be something really like abolish, um, abolish value. Okay. You know what I mean? If everybody really didn't have a, 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 a discrimination or critical idea of value, as in this is better than that, I think the world could be quite an interesting yeah. place. Because yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you had a Mercedes or a bicycle, yeah, yeah. it'd be cool. <laughs> You know, you can ride your bicycle with real cool and some fun. You can have to say these cool and some fun. They're not a big deal. It wouldn't be like... Because no. uh, you wouldn't know what value yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice thought. That's a nice idea. Well, I thank you very much for your time and your kindness. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.